truth of the matter is there's some people in this room, you are not really standing on your own two feet. You're standing on the word of God. The only reason why you got up this morning is because you heard a word from the Lord. The only reason why you said I won't give up on life, I won't give in, is because you heard a word from the Lord. I just believe there's some people in here, you are thriving. You are being fueled right now. You are being energized. Matter of fact, some of y'all are being reminded God is bringing back your memory. I got a word from the Lord and the word is telling me to keep on fighting. That word is telling me to keep on praising. That word is telling me to keep on going. To God be the glory and welcome to the Stephen Carwright Radio Show. I am your host, Stephen Carwright, and I'd like to welcome you to Faith and Empowerment in the Kingdom. If you're in the Denver area, please join us at the Refuge of Denver on Sundays at 10 a.m. at 9250 East Bellevue Avenue in Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. We would love to worship with you and your family. And as always, you can connect with us on our website at www.therefugedenver.org to stay connected and up to date to everything that God is doing right here with our community of faith. Thank you again for joining us, and we pray that you are blessed and edified by the message. that the thing that gets you through the journey is faith uh, and the thing that gets you through faith is the word of God and so what Abraham teaches us is he teaches us the power of that word uh, is that Abraham is 75 years old when he will die he will be 175 years old and so the journey for Abraham will cover the last 100 years of his life okay uh, but but it will be 25 years that will pass before Abraham sees even one thing from what God promised. Uh, and, and so Abraham has to be willing to live not based off what he see God doing, but he has to be willing to live based off what he heard God say. And so the power of what Abraham gives to us is he gives us the power and the assurance that we have in the word of God. Because you got to understand when 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 Abraham went to Egypt, he went to Egypt on a word when he came out of Egypt and dwelt uh, uh, in, in Bethel. He was in Bethel on a word when he let Lot go. He let he left Lot on a word when God shows him the land that he's going to show him, which we're going to talk about today. All of that happens based off of a word. It's not anything physically that has been manifested in association with what he spoke. All Abraham has is the word of God. And so. So the, 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 the key thing that we learn from Abraham is that if all you have is a word, that's all you need. Amen. And I might be preaching right now. Let's see uh, if all you have is a word that might be all you need, uh, because Abraham's life was sustained from 75 to 100 just on a word from God. He didn't even see a seed until he uh, 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 without having to hold on for 25 years just on what God said. I want to tell you today before I even get into this, don't ever forget what God said to you. It might have been 15 years ago, but if he said it, you can still bank on it. It might have been 20 years ago, but if God said it, don't you ever forget what God don't ever forget what he said about your kids when they were in your womb and there was a prophet that came and touched your belly and they said this child will be a prophet this child will preach the gospel this child when they were five years old and that person came and spoke don't ever forget that word because it may take some time for it to come to pass but he did say in Isaiah my word will never return unto me void if all you have is my word the truth of the matter is that some people in this room you are not really standing on your own two feet you're standing on the word of God the only reason why you got up this morning is because you heard a word from the Lord. The only reason why you said I won't give up on life, I won't give in, is because you heard a word from the Lord. I just believe there's some people in here, you are thriving, you are being fueled right now, you are being energized. Matter of fact, some of y'all are being reminded God is bringing back your memory. I got a word from the Lord and the word is telling me to keep on fighting. That word is telling me to keep on praising. That word is telling me to keep on going. That word is telling me I got my hands in my pocket because I'm trying not to go real hard real quick. But that word thing getting in my spirit. That word is telling me that the glory of God is going to show up. That the angels, oh my God, that word is telling me that I got a promise. I need to hold on. Not many days from hence, the word going to come to pass. The word going to prove itself. The word going to show itself. Not many days from hence, the word of the Lord is going to show you 
know that the word don't ever fail. It don't ever give up. It can't ever be stopped. It can't ever be thwarted. If all you got is a word. Abraham spent 25 years walking on the word. If all you got is a word, that's all you need. I want to tell somebody in here, don't give up on the word. Don't shut down on the word. Don't stop praising with the word. Don't stop talking about the word. He said in Hebrews, cast not away therefore your confidence. For ye have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, uh, you, uh, it shall come to pass. God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Don't give up on the word. Don't give up on the promise. Don't give up on your child. Don't give up on your money. Don't give up on your education. Don't give up. If there's a word on it, there's a fulfillment in it. If God put his word on it, then then he said, I put my word above even my name. So if he put his word on it, there is fulfillment in it. And all you got to do is hang on to the word. The journey of faith is a journey of walking on the word. This this is difficult because the word takes us beyond our senses. I put on I put on uh, my notes. Let me see if I can find this because I want to say it right. Ah, Jesus. I put in my I put in my notes that faith affects vision. Faith affects vision. Uh, faith always affects vision and vision always informs actions. And I put vision there because in Genesis 13, 14, Abraham made a decision uh, because of the things that were going on between him and Lot that he would separate from Lot and give Lot permission to go his way and, and continue to live his life and, 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 you know, take a land that he would choose and then Abraham would take a land. And, and the moment that Lot left, that's the moment that God said, lift up your eyes, Abraham, so you can see and look to the north, the south, the east, and the west, and you'll see everything. He said, everything that you can see is what you can have, essentially. He said, well, everything you see is what you can have. And so Abraham realizes that faith in God, he teaches us faith in God always affects vision. But uh, vision, I think, is still too limited Mm -hmm. because I think faith affects our senses. Uh, What you see, hear, smell, touch, taste, feel. Um, Faith affects our senses because it moves beyond our senses. Uh, faith will have you holding on to stuff that you ain't even touched yet. Gosh. It'll have you being moved by things you haven't even felt yet. And so in order to really walk a journey with God, you have to always be able to put your senses in their place. Because your natural man will always be telling you according to its limitations. But God is finite, so he says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. And so he's always moving beyond our sensory motors. He's always doing things. It's, it's, it's the times when you're looking at your situation and you want to blow up. You have reason to blow up. You have reason to be losing your mind right now. But for whatever reason, faith won't let you. For whatever reason, you, you, you're cool. For whatever reason, some, some's holding you. And it's like faith will hold your senses in tension. And, 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 and it'll be like holding a pit bull when it wants to attack. Because your, ten, your, your senses always naturally go to what they're inclined to do. Except when they become subject to faith. Because faith will show you things that your eyes can't even see, man. Like like faith will have you moving. It's the journey of faith. It'll keep you calm. What I'm saying is there's people in this room right now you are worshiping, but your situation was saying you shouldn't be worshiping. 
You were praising God, but your circumstances were saying, why are you praising God? You were glorifying God, but your money was saying, give glory to what? You were thanking God, but your job situation was saying, you shouldn't even be thanking God. What I'm saying is there's some people in this room right now, even while we were doing the worship, you was putting your senses in their place. Because your senses wanted to do one thing, but your word, your faith was informing your actions to do another thing. And it let you know it's all right to praise God. You still got a right to praise God. You still got a right to worship God. Your faith was telling you, you got a right to glorify God. I might look busted. I might look broke. It might look down, but I know in God, all things are possible. I can do anything but fail. He never leaves me nor forsake me. So I'm going to continue to worship God. I'm going to continue to bless God. I'm going to continue to thank God. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what it tastes like. I don't care what it feels like. Whatever, whatever's going on, I'm going to dictate my praise by the word of God. It'll move you beyond your senses. It'll move you beyond your senses. Now, when we look at Genesis chapter 12, when we look at Genesis chapter 12, here's the word that moves Abraham from jump. Here's the word. That moves Abraham and now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Who's going to make the name great? God. Who's going to do the blessing? God. And so initially everything that Abraham is relying on is not going to come from his own strength It's going to come from God's. Giving. And he says, I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you. You never have to worry about your enemies. And in these shall all families of the earth be what? Be blessed. And so Abraham departed. Verse four, as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and five years old and he departed out of Haran. Verse five says, and Abraham took Sarai, his wife and Lot, his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan. They came. Now, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 13. And we're going to go to verse 14. And a fast forward through this, Abraham leaves Haran. He's going, he goes into Canaan. Uh, then he leaves and, and goes, spends some time in Egypt and won't deal with the time that he spent in Egypt. But then he leaves out of Egypt and he goes back into the land of Canaan. And when he, when he goes back, as he journeys back out of Egypt, he runs into an issue uh, uh, as he sits in Bethel with, with Lot's people and his people. And there's contention between them. The Bible says the land was not able to bear both of them at the same time and so lot is great and abraham is great i want you to understand this lot is great and abraham is great and and the significant part about that is technically everybody that's associated associated with abraham and this blessing gets blessed by the blessing too um, Lot is blessed and Abraham is blessed. And even when Lot leaves, even as they're dealing with issues of Sodom and Gomorrah in the next chapter, when when uh, Lot gets taken by the kings, Lot is always uh, um, he's always benefiting from the blessing of Abraham. Um, and so what we see in Lot is the benefit. And, and, and that 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 should be because the Lord says uh, we're blessed to be a blessing. Right. So, a lot of, so everybody that's connected to us should benefit from our blessing. They should benefit from us. Everybody that's attached to you should benefit from you. That's why I'm big on, on uh, parents praying for their kids and uh, believing for your family. Because if you if you connected to me, then you're you're in the vicinity of the blessing. You're in the jurisdiction of the blessing. And as long as you're in the vicinity of that blessing, then you can get blessed, too. As long as you're here, you can get blessed, too. And, and so and so you you can go home and lay hands on the sick and they can recover. You can go home and speak life to family members and co-workers because when when they get around you, they get in the vicinity of the blessing that's on you. OK. All right. And so lot 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 is blessed and lot is blessed in the land. And he's so blessed that the land can't even bear both of them at the same time. He has to stretch out and expand himself because if he stays there, it'll be too congested. Uh, uh, It's too congested. Uh, Look at your name and say spread out, spread out, 
spread out, spread out. God wants you to spread your blessing out. He wants you to spread your anointing out. Don't just limit it to the circle you know, spread out. God is expanding your circle. He's expanding your reach. He's expanding your influence. He's expanding your connections. Spread out because this thing is too good to be limited to one place. Somebody say spread out. It's got to go beyond the world. It got to go beyond Denver. It got to go beyond uh, Centennial. You got to spread out a little bit. You got to go beyond black. It got to go beyond white. It got to go beyond brown. You got to spread out a little bit. God got to go beyond rich. Got to go beyond poor. Got to spread out. This thing is too good just to be limited to one circle. It's supposed to spread out. Sometimes God will create tension just to force you to move. He'll, he will. He'll, he'll, he'll create. He'll, he'll create some stuff. Some of those things <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, let me just go. Some of the stuff we're dealing with right now is not that somebody did something wrong. It's just God trying to get you a, your attention. He's trying to push you on out. He's ruffling the nest. He's he's changing up things because he's trying to say you need to go on out there. Uh, you're too fat on the word. There's somebody that needs to hear the revelation that I already gave you and you need to go and spread out. You need to share that thing with share the wealth, <laughs> share the word. Right. And sometimes Sometimes God will orchestrate circumstances that will force you to move. Amen. So Abraham is being forced to move in Genesis 13. He is forced to move. And then then once he makes the move, he gives Lot an opportunity to choose. Lot chooses. Lot chooses Jordan. It is a very beautiful, rich uh, 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 region patch of land. It is very, very nice. Albeit the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were a very wicked people at that time. That wickedness was not pervading the land. And so you didn't see how bad it was. Uh, uh, the, the, the land that on the other side of Jordan, the land on that side of the Dead Sea was beautiful. Lot looked at it and he said, I want that land. Lot made a choice to get that land. Now, I, 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 I wouldn't doubt that there may be some that there was probably something in, in Abram that when Lot chose that land, Land, he probably got upset because it's like I let him choose the good land. <laughs> you know, he, he got to choose the best land. I let him have first choice. But it's funny how God will do it. He'll always make things come back around full circle. And so once Abraham makes the decision to allow Lot to have his land, Lot chooses his land. And here's what it says in verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto you. And one day I want you to uh, underline or highlight verse 17. One day we're going to talk about what it means to walk through a land that God has promised you. One day we'll talk about it in briefly how God will allow you to explore what's yours before you even have it. OK. Um, and so one day we'll talk about that. But I, I won't I won't spend any time on that for now. But then it says in verse 18, then Abram moved, Abram moved, removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, uh, which is in Hebron and built there an altar unto the Lord. And so uh, I, I want to say real quick, it, it would seem according to Abraham's process specifically. And even as we journey um, into the land of God and in, in, journey into our own promises and walk in the things that God has called us to, uh, um, that it is. It is necessary for the promise to maintain its purity and hold true to its own core that that it is necessary for sanctification and separation. Uh, indeed, the same is true even for us today in Christ. Uh, separation is a necessary measure of the process of promise. Uh, the Lord would say, uh, told Abraham to separate himself from his country, his kindred, from his family house. Then he from then he had to separate himself from Lot. Then he tells us to come out from among them and be ye separate. It's, it's sanctification is a part of the process of God that that in order to go forward, there are things that you have to leave. Uh, going requires leaving. OK. All right. But but that's not but that's not the only part. The leaving is not the only part. Uh, and if you want that, we can make sure that message find some way to make that message available to you because you can hear what we talked about about last week about Lot having to leave. That's that's one part because departing, going forward in God means leaving for something. But that's not the only part because he says we have been called out of darkness 
into the marvelous life. And so if you talk about what you have to come out of, that's only one part of the process. God will never call you out of something if he doesn't intend for you to go into something. And so I would even venture to say that the bigger part of the conversation is not what you have to leave, but where you have to go. Uh, uh, what is he calling you into? What is he challenging you, you to do? What, where is he challenging you to go? Well, uh, he's called you out of the darkness. He's separated you from the heathen. He's separated you from your own issues. He's he's pulled you from addictions. He's pulled us from uh, 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 habits of going to the club and lifestyles of, of 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 frivolousness and all these other things. He's pulled us from these things. And anybody that grew up in church for a while know what it means to be pulled out of the world. You you only, you ain't got to be too old to know what it means because that's a big part of the church conversation is that we have to be sanctified and we got we got to be right. We got to be holy. That's an important part of it. But 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 holiness has a purpose, right? It has a reason for it. God calls us out for a reason. And so the question is, what is he calling me into? And, and so what is he calling me to? And it is this land, this land that God has called Abraham into. This is the part that I think we really, really have to understand, because what happened is if you leave from something, but you never replace it with something, you are susceptible to going back to something. OK, uh, if, if, if you never if you never finish the process, if you come out and you only stay out, out, then what happens is you become idle and idle idle time is the devil's playground and so if you're not moving and the truth is faith is Bill Winston say faith is always moving it's an ever increasing thing faith should always be going forward we should always be saying what's the next thing what's the next God I did that now what's the next level he says he'll take us from faith to faith so so God what's the next level what's what's the next best thing you could do what's the next challenge of your your faith. There's some people in this room, your faith hasn't been challenged in a long time. There's, a, there's some people in this room, it's been a long time since you made a step of faith, since you showed the world who you really believe and how you really believe. And I want to tell you something right now, you might as well go ahead and get ready because God won't let you live too long without challenging you to the next level of faith. I want to tell you, get ready right now because there may be some relationships that you walk into some tension with. Get ready. I just want to tell you, get ready because because God is trying to shift you to a next level of believing. He never wants us to get comfortable in believing. He wants us to have joy in believing. And what God did with Abraham and Lot is he shook up his comfort zone. And he says, you're getting comfortable right here. But there's some other things that I need to show you. And I can't show you as long as you're standing still. It's time to move. Tell somebody, say, it's time to move. It's time to move. It's time to move. God didn't call you out of that just because he needed you to stop smoking and drinking. He called you out because you're smoking and drinking will affect your lungs it'll affect your voice and he called you to preach and you won't be able to preach the way you're supposed to preach if your throat is all jacked up he called you out of that thing for a reason i want to know what are you calling me into god what are you taking me to god what is it that you're challenging me to god i want to know what is it what is this next level of faith Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor and say, he's challenging me, he's challenging me, he's challenging me, he's challenging me. I don't want to live without the challenge. I don't want to live, I don't want to live, because if I live without the challenge, then I, I, I become subject to this, having a form of godliness. Unchallenged people get tied down to forms. Gosh. Unchallenged people are those who get tied down and bound by forms, formalities, they, that which is familiar, that which I've always done, that which I've always known because I haven't been given God a chance to show me something else. Now, here's the can I can I give you the kicker to it now? Don't ask God to show you if you don't want him to change you. Amen. If I'm going to show you, Lot has to leave. If I'm really going to show you, then you have to accept that you and Lot can't hang together no more. Something has to change. Woo! Gosh, that was good in my spirit. Something has to change. It has to change in order for you to see what God needs you to see because faith affects vision. 
it affects what you need to see. Uh, and, and it keeps you in a place where you're seeing the right things you need to see. And so what God wanted to show Abraham when Lot left, and, and we'll, let me see how much time I got, I'm sorry. Uh, when God wanted to talk to Abraham, Abram, uh, when Lot left, he says, I want you to lift up now thine eyes and look for it from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou shalt see, uh, which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. I want you to underline verse 15. All the land you see. What can I have in God? Whatever I can see. Whatever you're willing to believe him to show you. That's what he can give you. This is why the challenge of faith is important, because if you don't challenge yourself, your natural man will limit your possibilities. Let me just walk this out. I got to make sure I hit this right. So bear with me. Your natural man will limit your possibilities. What can I have? Whatever I can see. What do I need to use to see? Not my natural eyes. I have to begin to see through the eyes of faith. I have to begin to challenge myself to see beyond what I saw. I have to challenge myself to see beyond what I saw. I'm going somewhere. Y'all better brace yourself. I have to challenge myself to see. So here's the thing. God is always trying to bless you bigger than what you can think and what you thought you saw. He's always ready to bless you bigger than that. I want you to go with me to Ephesians chapter. Chapter three. Because we look at Abraham's life from a hindsight perspective. And it is important for us to bring in what we already know about what God did that Abraham didn't know why God was doing it. It's important for us to just go on and bring it in. So let's let's go on and bring in what we have been able to come into. Abraham had to walk into it. We just was kind of born with it by faith in Jesus Christ. So let's see what 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 was in this land. What was God doing in Ephesians chapter three, verse 20? It kind of starts like this, um, just so we can under, have an understanding of God. Ephesians uh, chapter three, verse 20 says this. Now unto him that is able to do what? All right, I want you to say it again. Now unto him that is able to do what? Now, the part that you always got to understand when you read the scripture is that there is no comma between exceeding and abundantly. There's no comma. That means he's he's not just talking about abundantly. He's talking about exceeding abundantly. So I don't know. I don't know how that plays out in your mind. But when I hear abundantly, I think a whole lot. So my question is, what does exceeding abundantly look like? Am I am I preaching all right? Am I preaching all right? No, I don't want to just I, he he. I'm so, look. I, I want to know what abundantly looks like, but God doesn't even give me a chance to figure that out. He says, I I want I don't listen. My God, because He's always trying to bless me bigger. He's always trying to bless me bigger than what I think I saw, uh, what I can ask or think. Uh, he won't even let me limit myself to abundantly. Listen, I'm telling you, I, I just said something. I don't know if you heard it. He won't even he won't even let you be happy with abundantly. Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have life. What did he just say abundantly or did he say more abundantly? Listen, Jesus is saying you shouldn't even be satisfied with abundantly. That means actual. Oh, gosh. Abundance is a limitation of God's promise. I'm, man, I'm telling you, I'm trying not to sweat today. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. So here's the thing. Stop it right now. He didn't just say exceeding abundantly. He says above all. So now now what I'm saying is we're going to always be praying and asking God for what we can think. But our thoughts have a limit. And what the Lord says Whatever you ask me for, expect more than that. 
Because I'm always going to bless you bigger than what you asked for. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We pray that you are blessed by everything that was shared. And we look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue our pursuit of faith and empowerment in the kingdom. God bless you.